What is acute malnutrition? Acute malnutrition is a term used to cover both wasting and nutritional edema. Acute malnutrition results from a decrease in food consumption and or illness resulting in sudden weight loss or bilateral nutritional edema. A child aged 6 months to 18 years has severe acute malnutrition if the following is present. Mid-upper arm circumference less than 11 cm or presence of pitting edema of both feet. A child aged less than 6 months has severe acute malnutrition if the following is present. Visible severe wasting or presence of pitting edema of both feet. Outpatient therapeutic program or OTP is used to treat children with severe acute malnutrition at the community level. To set up an OTP program, you will need the following therapeutic products, medicines, and equipment. Ready-to-use therapeutic foods. These are ready-to-use therapeutic foods that do not require preparation by the mother or caregiver. They can be provided for the treatment of children with severe acute malnutrition on a weekly basis at health post level to be given for the children with severe acute malnutrition on a daily basis at home. Amoxicillin. This is an antibiotic for treating infections. Mebendazole 100 mg or albendazole 400 mg. Mebendazole tablets are given to children for deworming purposes. Treatment against parasites that compete for the child's nutritional intake is critical for successful treatment against malnutrition. Folic acid. Folic acid is an essential micronutrient which helps to correct children's micronutrient status. Vitamin A capsule. Vitamin A is important to boost the immune system of malnourished children, thereby increasing their capacity to fight diseases. Measles vaccine. Measles can be deadly for malnourished children. Protecting them through vaccination can save their lives. Like with measles, Malnourished children have an increased chance of dying if they contract malaria. It is therefore important to be prepared to treat malaria if it does manifest itself. Plastic cups and a jerry can filled with drinking water should be available to last the month. Children should be offered drinking water when they are doing the appetite test for ready-to-use therapeutic foods. One Salter scale of 25 kilograms plus pants or plastic basin for weighing children is also required. You will need at least two mid-upper arm circumference or MUAC tapes, which you will use to measure the mid-upper arm circumference of children who come to be screened and for follow-up. Mid-upper arm circumference readings are accurate indicators of severe malnutrition in children between 6 months and 5 years old. You will need a thermometer for checking the temperature of children. Children with fevers may require referral to health centers for inpatient treatment. Jerry cans with water for hand washing purposes. You will also need a hand basin and at least one bar of soap per month to keep caretakers' hands clean during appetite test. Care providers should be informed to wash their hands before handling foods that will be eaten by children. It is also important that you have a clean latrine at the health post which can be used by children and care providers when they come to the weekly OTP. Maintaining hygienic conditions will protect children from contracting illnesses like diarrhea, which can be deadly for malnourished children. Having a clean latrine at health post is also important for education purposes regarding hygiene. 
you will also need stationary materials for the OTP program. Each health post should have the OTP Quick Reference Manual. This manual is designed to provide guidance on each step of the OTP process and should be used to check on any procedures that you may have questions about. You will need OTP cards which you will use to register and monitor the progress of children taking part in your outpatient treatment program. A registration book will be required where you will document children who enter and leave the program. You will need referral slips which you will use to refer patients with medical complications to therapeutic feeding units or inpatient units. You will also need referral slips which volunteer community health workers will use to refer children to the health post or OTP. Stock cards or supply register is required to track your use of supplies. You have to make sure the availability of adequate supplies before the date of the weekly OTP. Taking good care of your supplies is critical for your outpatient therapeutic program. Supplies should be placed in a cool and dry place. Place items on pallets and protect windows and doors against rodents. Maintaining the cleanliness of your working environment and supply storage area are critical factors for success. In order to monitor the OTP properly, you need to produce the timely monthly report using the monthly therapeutic feeding program report form. You have to send the report to the Wereda Health Office, keeping a copy for the health post. Community mobilization. For the implementation of your outpatient therapeutic program, you will need to ensure that the community that you serve is aware of the therapeutic feeding services that you are providing and feels comfortable with bringing children to be screened and to take part in the program. For this to happen, you will need to do effective community mobilization before starting and during your OTP program with your volunteer community health workers. We are in SNNPR region, Alaba Special Wereda in Kobok Abeli, and volunteer community health workers are explaining about the opening of OTP in the health post for the community leaders. The community leaders and the volunteer community health workers have agreed in arranging a meeting with the community to inform the opening of OTP in the health post and to do the pre-screening for malnutrition. The volunteer community health workers with the community leaders go around the Gote and inform the community to bring their under five children for pre-screening at the center of the Gote in the coming day. During the community meeting, the volunteer community health worker elaborates the causes of malnutrition for the community, stating that severe acute malnutrition is mainly caused by inadequate food intake and or illness. Severe acute malnutrition can be effectively treated at the health post level, and Alaba Health Post has already opened an OTP to treat the cases. In order to identify children with severe acute malnutrition, MUAC measurements should be taken and the presence of edema should be checked. Any suspected cases of severe acute malnutrition should be sent to the health post with referral slip for further evaluation and treatment. The volunteer community health worker is doing the pre-screening and those children with MUAC measurements of greater or equal to 11 centimeters and no edema are sent to their homes. The volunteer community health worker has found a child with mid-upper arm circumference of less than 11 centimeters, but the child has no pitting edema. He will then inform the mother to take the child to Alaba Health Post for further evaluation and treatment. He also provides the mother with a referral slip, and the mother agrees to take the child to the health post. The volunteer community health worker has also found the child with edema. He checked for edema by pressing his thumbs into the swollen foot of the child. Thumbs leave indented marks, and this is a sign of severe malnutrition, and the volunteer community health worker refers the child for further screening and treatment at the health post. Home visits are good opportunities to identify children who missed the pre-screening during the community meeting. During the home visit, the volunteer community health worker identifies one child who missed the previous pre-screening. The mid-upper arm circumference of the child is measured, and it is less than 11 centimeters and has no edema. He informs the mother to take the child to the health post and provides her a referral slip. The mother agrees and takes the child to the health post.
It is important that families in your community understand that treatment for malnutrition is not an indication of social status or wealth. They should feel comfortable with bringing any child whom they suspect might be malnourished to be screened. Families should bring their children to the health post for further screening and treatment. And they should be well informed not to be afraid or think it is a curse, but that it is treatable and that the chances of their children surviving are high. It is very important that your first assessments of children are done carefully. You should take your time to do all the necessary steps during admission and keep appropriate records to enable smooth subsequent follow-up. Mid-upper arm circumference and edema detection are the most appropriate techniques to be used to detect severe acute malnutrition in a health post context. Weight is used to follow the progress of the admitted child and decide when to discharge him or her. Bilateral edema is a sign of severe malnutrition. Children with edema need to be in therapeutic feeding programs immediately. Only children with bilateral edema are recorded as having nutritional edema. In order to determine the presence of edema, normal thumb pressure is applied to both feet for three seconds. If a shallow print persists on both feet, then the child presents edema. Mid-upper arm circumference is an alternative measure of severe acute malnutrition in children. Take the following steps to measure the mid-upper arm circumference of a child. Ask the mother to remove clothing that may cover the child's left arm. If possible, the child should stand erect and sideways to the measurer. Estimate the midpoint of the left upper arm, straighten the child's arm, and wrap the tape around the arm at the midpoint. Make sure the numbers are right side up. Make sure the tape is flat around the skin. Inspect the tension of the tape on the child's arm. Make sure the tape has the proper tension and is not too tight or too loose. When the tape is in the correct position on the arm with correct tension, read and call out the measurement to the nearest 0.1 cm. Immediately record the measurement. Once you have determined that the child has severe acute malnutrition, you must check to make sure that they do not have additional complications and can be treated at your OTP. If one of the following complications is present, refer the patient to inpatient care. Vomiting everything, convulsion, lethargy, unconsciousness, or unable to feed. If the child has pneumonia or severe pneumonia, you should also refer them for inpatient treatment. Signs include chest indrawing and fast breathing. Ask the caregiver if the child has blood in their stool, as this is a sign of dysentery and should be referred for inpatient care. If the child has fever with a temperature greater or equal to 37.5 degrees Celsius or low body temperature with temperatures less than 35 degrees Celsius or cold to touch, they should be referred to inpatient care. Note that the child less than 6 months old with severe acute malnutrition should be referred to inpatient therapeutic feeding unit. After you have determined that the child does not have one of these complications, then the next step is the appetite test. Appetite Testing Techniques Appetite is a very important indicator of the clinical situation of a patient. A poor appetite means that the child has a significant infection or a major metabolic abnormality such as liver dysfunction indicating the need to be admitted into an inpatient facility. Moreover, a child with poor appetite is unlikely to take the amount of ready-to-use therapeutic foods given to him or her as a weekly ration. The appetite test should be conducted in a separate, quiet area. Explain to the caretaker the purpose of the appetite test and how it will be carried out. The caretaker should wash their hands. The caretaker should sit comfortably with the child on his or her lap and should either offer the ready-to-use therapeutic foods from the packet or put a small amount on his or her finger and give it to the child. The caretaker should offer the child the ready-to-use therapeutic food gently encouraging the child all the time. If the child refuses, then the caretaker should continue to quietly encourage the child and take time over the test. The test usually takes a short time, but may take up to 30 minutes. 
the child must not be forced to take the ready-to-use therapeutic food. The child needs to be offered plenty of water to drink from a cup as he or she is taking the ready-to-use therapeutic food. Assessing, classifying and taking actions. If a child aged less than six months shows visible severe wasting or presence of pitting edema of both feet, if a child aged above six months with mid-upper arm circumference less than 11 centimeters or has pitting edema on both feet and moreover shows one of the following danger signs. Failed appetite test. Pneumonia or severe pneumonia. Blood in the stool fever, or hypothermia, low body temperature. Classifying the stage. It shows severe, complicated malnutrition. Actions to be taken. Immediately refer the child to inpatient care where he is provided follow-up and care. If age six months or above and mid-upper arm circumference less than 11 centimeters, or edema of both feet and pass the appetite test, classify as severe uncomplicated malnutrition. Manage in OTP using the Health Post OTP protocol. If mid upper arm circumference of 11 cm to less than 12 cm and no edema of both feet, Classify as moderate acute malnutrition and refer to supplementary feeding program if available. Counsel on child feeding and care. If mid upper arm circumference is greater than 12 cm and no edema of both feet, then classify as no acute malnutrition, counsel the mother and congratulate her. OTP program admittance. You must first explain to the caregiver